Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, to the nominee, Honorable Joe. Um, what you have said about uh, cadastral and all that, uh, your predecessor, when he was there, uh, Honorable Vuria, when he came for vetting in 2022, he talked about the NIS doing prospecting for all the minerals in the country. And um, there, are min there are minerals in Meru County, by the way, in Beo. But unfortunately, even by the time he left, he never visited Meru. So my first question to you would be, like what Honorable Posing has said, you may be a desk CS if you are approved. Uh, what will happen, I hope, because you know Meru is cold and Mombasa is hot and you're used to the hot weather, you may feel very cold in Meru. <coughs> Se uh, and the same thing, on the same, uh, there has been exploration of copper and gold in Meru. Um, but unfortunately, the company which was prospecting, a Kenyan company, uh, Goita Mining Limited, has been bought out by Avira Resources Limited of Australia. So my question would be, do you think that we as Kenyans will benefit or will the benefit be for outsiders who come prospecting in Kenya and taking away everything what is there? The second question, because that was one question, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there is a question from one of uh, our viewers, and he says, the Auditor General, that is now for the time you were as a governor in Mombasa, that there is an Auditor General report uh, about garbage, a one billion shilling garbage tender, which was given to some of your relatives in Mombasa. And there is even talk that it is not Ali Hassan or Hassan Ali Joho who handled Mombasa County. It was a relative of his. I would not mention him for uh, it would not be right, but it was not you who were running. You were running the political part. The other part was being run by somebody else. Can you confirm or deny? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Nominee, make a distinction between Meru and Tharakanifi. He's been talking about Meru. If I'm to say anything, it will be on Tharakanifi. The two are separate and distinct. You are actually vetting the nominee on behalf of the people no, of Kenya. No, no. Not your constituencies, Mr. not your counties. Mr. Speaker, sir, we have questions to ask. We ask and the uh, question, we have to draw that but avoid the temptation to appear that you are vetting nominees on behalf of your constituencies no. or your counties. I agree, Mr. Speaker, but Mr. Speaker, some questions are relevant. We have to draw. So, uh, I'm not curtailing you at all. Go on right. and ask. Thank but you. Just Thank you very much for the distinction. Um, nominee, you began when you were responding to a question by stating that what it is that in Liberia gets right and we get it wrong. And here you were talking about maritime affairs, the sea vessels. And I don't know whether you know the historical background, why Liberia is actually the largest uh, flag carrier in respect of ships. And that also goes with, it has the highest number of shipwrecks in the high seas, purely because most of those ships are condemned in their countries and this is the reason why they find solace in going to Liberia to get national flag. So I do not know whether you wish Kenya also to take that route and emulate that you respond. Number two, a question from a viewer who wants to know um, really whether the nominee is familiar with the minerals found in the country and where those minerals are to be found, including my own county, Tharakanithi, and my constituency, Tharaka. Then the third one is on fisheries. We have what are known as Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institutes spread across the country. Some of them are stored. They started building, but halfway they collapsed. If you are approved by this house. Nominee, do you confirm 
that you would embrace the policy of completing those institutes because some of them are actually meant for marine research in the interland. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, don't feel like I curtailed you. I was just giving direction to everybody. Owen. Th thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I would like to request the following information from uh, our nominee one. Uh, listening to you, uh, Honorable Ali Hassan Joho, you come through as a hustler that has come from the bottom up, uh, bottom there, coming up through many struggles. And uh, there are very many lessons that we learned from your interaction in this committee. Um, as you sit, if approved by this committee, if you sit in cabinet, um, how do you help to encourage the hustlers, especially in the mining, in the fisher, the fisher folks in this case in Kenya are basically hustlers who are trying to make it in life. Uh, probably you are a good example of that. How do you intend to really uh, bring in that to cabinet and assist the cabinet really uh, to, to, to help the hustlers in this country who seem to have given up? Secondly, how do you use your experience in business? Uh, I can see you, you have good credentials in business and you have come up as a businessman. How do you intend to bring in those credentials in your business field and your experience and your experience also as governor who chaired a cabinet at the county level to assist the cabinet to really meet the aspirations of the young people who are actually hustlers, who seem to be giving up, who seem to, the Gen Zs who seem to be giving up in life. Uh, how do you intend to bring that uh, experience uh, to help Kenyans? Um, uh, my second question is that um, specifically to the marine area, there is a marine special, special plan that has been in the works for many years. It has never been, never succeeded, it has never taken off. Many people in the marine industry are waiting for that special plan. How soon can this country realize a special plan in the marine area? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. You can take those, uh, nominee. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Let me begin, first of all, by the this, this special plan issue. And I, actually, I, I believe strongly in planning from an informed position and uh, real-time data management and collection. Basically, if even land use is critical that is properly planned. So this, for me, is urgent, and I'm going, if approved, to ask that it be expeditiously done, because it is important. Uh, Honorable Owen, sorry, I'm starting with you, Owen. My experience as a businessman and as a public officer, and I, I am glad that I served in different spectra. I was once an assistant minister, um, got a lot of guidance at that time from uh, the Honorable Speaker. He was my mentor, actually, in Parliament. Um, and uh, I participated strongly in matters of legislation. I remember the NTSA formation was done under my watch at the 10th Parliament, Mr. Speaker. And the argument um, stature of business I got is for literally experience. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I run, I've run quite uh, fairly big business and I bring that on board to be able to capture the ideology of a business sector, combine it with public sector so that we can be able to deliver on behalf of the country. Um, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure Honorable Owen those wavuvis or fisher folks or artisan fishermen, they need help. They need help to be organized. They need, for example, we must find means, whether by way of partnership or government funding or private sector. And this, for me, is an area of interest because I am aware of the Go Blue conversation. Many young Kenyans have been sponsored. But we need really now to start sponsoring them for deep sea fishing. Because even if uh, they use what they have today, they can achieve that much. But if we get them to go deep sea fishing, then now for me, that will be the game changer. And that is what I will, 
I will undertake to do if uh, this committee approves me. Mr. Speaker, on matters of stalled projects, government should not have any stalled projects. You must plan well. Mr. Sorry, Mwishmiwa uh, Murugara. Murugara. Government should not have stalled projects. We must develop plans that, uh, that do work. So that when you start something, you must finish. And like Owen asked, I gained that experience from private sector practice. Value for money and timely delivery is critical. So expect that we'll have a conversation. First of all, I'm, I'm not in a position today to say I know all the stalled projects, but we will have a conversation and develop a clear plan to be able to complete uh, the stalled projects. We don't want a situation where we embark on new projects and we leave uh, the old ones stalled. My brother, Dawood, you talked about NIS uh, prospecting reports. I'm not in a position right now to comment about it. But uh, I have an issue on communication that must improve. And I, I would urge even my colleagues in other ministries that ministries must help the president to communicate to Kenyans. If we had a clear communication plan, you probably wouldn't need this opportunity to ask, what do we have in the country? So I will go to the ministry if approved, learn what they have, and I promise I will communicate to the Kenyan public of what they have. Mr. Dawood, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Dawood asked on uh, exploration of gold and copper in Meru, and the fact that uh, the miners or the mining company exchange hands. I think the fact that companies do exchange hands doesn't mean the law on royalties change. It should remain. And they should continue to pay royalties, both to, to the communities, county government, and national government. So I, I doubt if uh, the, the, the government will lose. The only thing that I am concerned about, and I think we collectively should, is the testing of minerals. Whether we have that capacity in the country. Because I'm told, I took some time and called some, some minister friend I have in another country that's very successful in mining. I'm told in instances where you mine copper, you are very likely to get good deposits of gold. But what the miners do is that they only report copper. So therefore, we urgently need to enhance our testing capacity and uh, ground truthing. And I will happily visit you in Meru, in Taraka, in uh, Mi Migori. I'll go to Suna. I'll go to Kikuyu. I'll go to Turkana. Turkana has the potential of, uh, of uh, exporting large quantity of uh, what they call mango tilapia. Huge market for mango tilapia in uh, DRC. I have to go there and see how we can improve on that. I will go to Busia for, for gold and value addition. I'll go to Kakamega and the larger Western. Everywhere where there's potential for minerals. I will go to ensure, first of all, we involve the communities, we work with the counties, we secure the communities, we engage on matters of environmental impact. So I will be visiting every part of this country, Mr. Dawood, including Taraka and Meru. And Paul Coates. And uh, Kosin is a fairly blessed um, man. I and hope everywhere. Me. And everywhere. Yes. But I'm, I, want, I, want, I want Kosin to undertake that he'll host me when I go there. <laughs> so prepare some, some sumptuous cuisine. Um, on the one billion tender, I saw it. Mr. Speaker, let me confirm. This is a matter that was audited, dealt with, investigated by the anti-corruption and the DC and everybody, and it was concluded. First and foremost, it's, it has never been one billion. The contract, yes, it was a tender advertised. Someone won the bid, not from my family. My family is in the logistics business. They are extremely busy. In fact, 
Sometimes I even struggle them. I struggle to encourage them to help me with social programs and our foundation. They are too busy. They have no time to do government business. And by the way, Mr. Speaker, just to put the record, my family does not do business with any government entity. We are in logistic business in Tanzania, in Uganda, in South Sudan, in Dubai, and here in Kenya. So please be <coughs> assured, my family is not in any way involved in that tender. And the actual amount that was being investigated, Mr. Speaker, was just about 200 million paid to the company that won the bid over a period of three years. The way it is portrayed is like I went to the, to the county coffers, put a check of one billion and gave to my cousin. That is not the case. It was a tender, advertised, someone applied. It's only that I cannot mention the name of the guy who won the tender. But even him, he, 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 bid, he did bid in that tender for, for just helping us to achieve certain environmental standards. He was already a big billionaire. So he just set up just with, and he bid, he, he outbid everybody. So in the period of three years, Mr. Dawoodi paid 290 million. And it was investigated and concluded. We also received some memoranda on that. Uh, you've answered all the three. Now let's go to Robert Mbui. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I haven't answered the issue on uh, Liberia. Okay. And it is very important. Okay. And I want to inform uh, Honorable Murugara that, yes, there may be historical issues. But you know what? You call them abandoned or condemned vessels. I want to enlighten you. I'm actually going to encourage those condemned uh, vessels to come to Kenya for one purpose, destruction. It's a big business opportunity. Honorable Murugar, I don't know whether you are, you are aware. The maritime standards set on uh, the time period a vessel should be sailing is very strict. Where do I see the opportunity? I have seen India is big. Singapore is big on vessel destruction. So I would also encourage the private sector here. Let those condemned vessels come. We demolish them and help our steel industry. It will it be a game changer for our steel industry. One, first of all, the owner of the vessel, vessels pays to bring the vessel. And they pay for destruction. And we remain with the steel. So it is what we do with it. For me, so Mr. Murugara, I see there a great opportunity that we must engage in. Sumra <laughs> uh, Robert, then uh, Stephen, then uh, Didoras, in that order. Yeah, thank you. 